Hey, how's everyone doing? So today I'm just going to go over the new Robotank controller. So this is it here. Uh, we've got a Pi 3 plugged in and I'm just going to do some bench tests on it. So we're just going to go over the DC uh, ripple on the power supplies and see how well it does there. We're going to throw a load through the board through our DC ports. Um, that's what these two cables are. This is our DC load and we're going to uh, check out our pulse width modulation signals and analog signals and we will do a short circuit protection test here and see what happens there. So here's our power supply that we're going to power the controller with. Right now we're going to start with 12 volts and this is our power going into the controller. So we'll start with our D DC ripple. Um, what DC ripple is that just uh, all power supplies have a rating for DC Ripple and it just says how clean the power supply is. And um, DC Ripple can cause various effects. Um, it can be hard on components. Um, sensitive circuits are affected by it, um, like our pH for example. Um, pH is based on uh, voltage, so if our voltage is spiking up and down, um, our pH will change accordingly. Um, so yeah. That's what DC Ripple basically is. And the lower, here's our number here, peak to peak. We want as low as peak to peak as we can get. Um, industry standard is like something like this power sh supply should be about 100 microvolts peak to peak. Um, 50 microvolts peak to peak is good. And something under 10 is really good. And so let's see if we have something like that here. <laughs> um, okay. So here's our power supply, and we'll connect that. And you can see our peak to peak, the bottom number down here is 150, 120, 100, and it jumps around. Um, you can see our spikes in the screen there. So that's our power supply, just as it comes. So we'll plug that into the controller. And now, if we check the exact same two points, you can see here, that's where the power goes in. So basically, we're checking the same point as we just did, except on the controller, where the two pins go into the controller. And there it is. You can see immediately it got cleaned up. If we get a good connection here, it won't move around. So 46, 48. 50, so much cleaner. So immediately the controller cleaned up this dirty power supply. So that is good. Now we will go to our 5 volt rail. So this is our 5 volts here. And I will put this in here. We'll check that. And we can see it's a little bit lower. Pretty much matching. 42, 44, 50. So that is our 5 volt rail, and then we have a 3.3 over here. And you can see that's the low 40s. And finally, we have our pH circuit. And you can see that down to 10. So we're scaled at 50 microvolts, which means each of these little dotted lines that you probably can't see is 50 microvolt range. So I'm just going to zoom in. So there's 10 microvolt zoom, so now each of those dots is 10 microvolts. And you can see how clean our rail is. 6, 7, 8 microvolts peak to peak. That's very good. So what that equates to for this pH circuit is it will be very stable. Um, it won't fluctuate and yeah, that's basically that. So we take that off. Now what will we show? Well, let's just put this back on here. And we're going to turn our power supply. So 12 volts and we'll go up to 24 volts. And you can see at 24 volts we have the same. 6, 8, and check our 5 volts again, and there it is. So very happy with that. So now we're going to put a load on the controller, because when you put a load on, we're just going to zoom out a bit, 
and by the way this is as zoomed in as I can get on here so the fact that we can do that is good and we'll put it about there I'm going to turn on this load so we can see here the controller as it sits draws 3 watts with the Pi on Wi-Fi and 0.12 amps at 24 volts so we'll turn on our DC load and now we can see we're drawing 3 amps and over here it pulled the voltage down to 23.21 volts 70 watts 3 amps so you can see our noise remained the same well it actually did go up a little bit sorry uh, 60 we'll turn our load off and you can see it drop down a little bit but that isn't much for a 3 amp load well, let's turn our load Well, oh, we got a noisy fan, but 4 amps and we're still nice and low. Off, on. The capacitors are holding it. There's no drops in that voltage. If they had a weak capacitor, this line would go like that because the voltage dropped. But we don't get that. And the max rating on here this is 4 amps, it can hold 4 amps for maybe an hour, but after an hour, uh, there's a MOSFET here for the reverse polarity, it gets warm, so we are going to limit the controller at 3 amps, even though it can do more, but 3 amps you can run it forever, at 24 volts, which is, oh well, we're putting 4 amps right now, so let's go back to uh, Three amps. No, seventy watts, seventy-five watts. So we'll go to seventy watts here. So that's the limit on these ports. Seventy watts at twenty-four volts, or thirty-five watts at twelve volts. Twelve volts, and we're about thirty-five watts there. So that is our power situation. So quite happy with that. And we're back down. So our next thing, since we're doing power, is we'll do a short circuit. So we've got some tweezers here, and this is our temperature port. So I don't know if you can see our little lights on here. We're drawing 0.2 amps, and I've got a little light on here. And I'm just going to short. So what I'm doing right now is taking the 5 volt rail and the ground and just shorting it. So this is a dead short. And there we go, the controller shut off, I don't know if you see those lights are all off, the Pi is off, and we're drawing 0.6 amps, and then it drops to 0.17 amps. We take off that, short, and she comes back alive, pH is coming back on, and her Pi is back on. So, no, no nightmares if you uh, short this out. Next thing is our pulse with modulation signals. So, I'm just going to take this little clip on our probe. And we'll go to our ground here. There is our signal there. Down. So this is a 10 volt signal at 50%. So you can see 50 uh, cycle, and we will yes, make that a little larger. So now I've got this little jumper here. The controller, these eight ports. I don't know if you can see this. I'm checking these eight ports over here. Um, these are for LEDs, and these pins here are jumpers for these eight ports. So we can have 0 to 5 volts pulse width, 0 to 10 volts pulse width, uh, 0 to 5 volts, or 0 to 10 volts analog. So right now, with no jumper on, we are 10 volts. And there it is there. There we 
go. Now I'll put this little jumper on, and you will see. There, five volts. Ten volt, five volt. Technically, this is, you can see, ten four peak to peak. Now our next one, that's the pulse width modulation signal uh, filtered to an analog signal. So you can see that's nice. And back to our pulse width modulation. And we're at 200 hertz, which matches what we are putting into it. So there is that. I think that's it. I don't know. Not my best video. I don't like videos, but anyways, there we go. One other thing I will show, since it's relevant. So you can see we're drawing three amps. This DC port, this is our backup port. If we unplug it, we can see it just shuts off. So you could have a float switch in there, and it would go on and off. Well, over CP. Anyways, oh, I just guess it shuts down because there's no power to unregulate it. I don't know. And then we plug back in. It doesn't like that. Okay, so anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good day.